Okay, so now we're in 2.3, and we want to talk about Venn diagrams. This is actually going to be two videos, uh, so it's a little bit more manageable. Um, and so we do have four objectives. We want to understand the meaning of a universal set and how to picture that, right? We're going to understand the basic ideas of a Venn diagram, which is how we're going to picture the universal set. We're going to use the Venn diagrams to visualize relationships between two sets basically the proper subsets okay that are going to come out of our universal set and then we want to be able to find the complement of a set what is not in our uh, set that may still be part of the universal set okay so universal sets and venn diagrams the universal set is a general set that contains all elements under discussion so if we go back to our NBA players, right? NBA players would be our universal set and Orlando Magic players would be a subset within that universal set, okay? And then you have uh, John Venn uh, created the Venn diagrams to show the visual relationships among sets. Basically, sets are a very abstract sort of thing and so uh, he knew that people understood things visually and so he said, you know, maybe if I made a visual relationship uh, picture of what these things look like, we might be able to understand them better. And it, and it really has helped uh, that. So the universal set is represented by a rectangle. So we'll always have the rectangle. Okay. And then we have the universal set up in the corner and its definition, the well-defined set. And then we'll have A will be a part of that. Okay. Uh, subsets within the universal set are depicted by circles, um, sometimes ovals or other shapes. Basically, though, we're going to use circles in this class. All right. Now, this symbol we're going to save for later. So I just want you to peek at that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. All right. So here we go. Determining sets from a Venn diagram. Use the Venn diagram to determine each of the following sets. So the universal set is everything inside the rectangle, right? So U is a set such that the square is in it, the triangle is in it, the dollar sign is in it, the M is in it, and the 5 is in it. Okay, so everything, all of the elements within the triangle are in the universal set. Only those things within the circle of A, right, are in its set. So just the square and the triangle, okay? So A is definitely a proper subset of U. And the set of elements in U that are not in A. And this not in A is that A complement, that little guy right there means complement, and so A complement are all of the things not in A. And so if you're not in A, you're over here. And that would be these other three elements, the dollar sign, the M, and the 5. Those three things are outside. So those are an A complement. So if you look, if you put A and A complement together, you get U in this particular case. All right? And that makes us happy. All right, so how are we going to represent two sets in a Venn diagram because here you have the universal set right um, maybe NBA basketball players and these two sets have no common elements all right so if you've got a okay is the Orlando Magic basketball players well they're all NBA players and then you have current LA Lakers basketball players that would be over here right and so you go oh well that's interesting so these guys are uh, in B, and they're NBA basketball players, but they're disjoint. Current Laker players are not uh, current Orlando Magic players. And so this is a disjoint set, and these two sets have no common elements. Okay? No common elements. <laughs> For proper subsets, okay, all of the elements of A are elements of B. So element A right here could be, I don't know, element A right here could be Dwight Howard, 
right? Okay, get the booze out of the way now. There's Dwight Howard, okay? And he would be an L.A. Laker, right? So there's the L.A. Lakers, okay? And that, of course, is in the universal set. So Dwight Howard is an NBA player who plays for the Lakers, right? And all Lakers play our NBA players. So that would be a smaller subset. So for this particular case, all of the elements of one set are elements of the other set. All right, and that's just a nice visual for the proper subset. So disjoint sets, no elements in common, proper subsets, all the elements in common. Now, what about equal sets? If A is equal to B, okay? So <clears throat> if you have A is equal to B, then they're exactly the same set. They have all the same elements inside. And so uh, there's complete overlap, right? So it's not a proper subset. It's just a subset, and they are equal sets. This is the most common, though. This is the one that we're going to see in all of our examples. Sets with some common elements. If set A and set B have at least one element in common, then the circles representing the sets must overlap. So basically, if we had the was an Orlando Magic player and was an L.A. Laker player, right? Well, then you would have Dwight Howard would be in this intersection. He used to play for the Orlando Magic. He also plays now for the L.A. Lakers, and they are all NBA players in these sets, right? So Dwight Howard is in this middle spot. <clears throat> There's probably a few others, but I don't follow basketball well enough to know um, what they are, right? But here's some overlap. Uh, you could also have um, is part poodle, is part Labrador, and so then you would have a mix here in the middle of poodle and Labrador, and they would all be dogs, right, over here, canines, all right? And so um, any number of possibilities for, for this. You know, you could have people that drink, people that smoke, and then in the overlap, you would have people who drink and smoke, all right? Uh, and so that would be a way of getting an overlap. And we're going to see that a lot in class. Now, so determining sets from a Venn diagram. So now we, we have all of this overlap. And we have these different regions right here. So this is region 1. See the Roman numeral 1. This is going to be region 2 in the overlap. This is going to be region 3. Again, a Roman numeral. And then region 4 over here is outside of A and B, but still in the universal set. So as you can see, we have the letters A, B, and C in A. We have D in 2. We have E in region 3. And we have F and G in region 4. So the universal set is the set such that you have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All of those elements okay for B we have the set if you look at B I'm gonna change colors here right if you look at B see this right here D and E are in B okay because B is made up of region 2 and 3 so B is going to be the element D and E all right now you want the set of elements in A but not in B, okay? So how am I gonna figure that out? So I want the set of elements in A, but not in B. So if they're in A, but not in B, basically you're just talking about this region right in here. And let me change colors again, right? So you're talking about in A, but not in B, okay? So we're gonna exclude this area right here. So that's just A, B, and C. Okay, so we want A, B, and C. Okay, so how do we write this? Well, it's an element in A, and it's not in B, and the way that we're going to write the and is we're going to write the intersection, because it has to be both, okay? And so the intersection of those two. So the not in B is everything outside of B, which would include the F and the G, 
but I'm then only going to include the elements of A. And so that's going to get rid of the F and G and just give me the A, B, and C. So all the elements of A and not B. And so that's just the A, B, C. All right? Now we're going to talk about this a little bit more in the next video, but I'm just giving you a little, little preview out, all right? And that makes us happy because we're going to get some more time to deal with this concept. The set of elements in U that are not in B. Okay, so let's think about this. The set of elements in U, okay, so that's everything, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, that are not in B. Well, the not B is going to be everything that's not D and E, right? So you're going to have A, B, and C, A, B, and C, and then F and G. And this is just basically B complement, all right? So there's your B complement because u is just everything okay so i don't need to any intersection or union or anything crazy there the set of elements in both a and b okay so they have to be in both a and b well there's only one value that's both in a and b let me change the color one more time this guy right here in region number two is the only one that's in both a and b okay and we're going to write that is if it's in a Remember, intersection I told you was an and, and B. So if it's in A and B, the only thing it can be is D right here. Okay? And that makes us happy, this nice little example right here. So now we need a definition, the complement of a set. Now I've already been using it. Okay? It's symbolized by this A complement right here. But the complement of a set A, symbolized by A complement, is the set of all elements in the universal set that are not in A. It is really important that you focus on in the universal set. So if I say um, the universal set is dogs, and I say that A is poodles, then the complement of A is not lizards and iguanas and people and socks and all of that stuff. These are all dogs that are not poodles. So we're only talking about Labradors and uh, Rottweilers and, you know, mutts that don't have any poodle in them. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. So they are still in the universal set. The shaded region represents the complement of set A or the A complement, all right? So here is all of the elements in A, are all of these guys right here inside of A. And then of course, not A <coughs> is everything outside in this shaded region right here. And this is where A complement is, but still inside the universal set, still inside that defined area in here. So here you have poodles, and out here you have not poodles, but still dogs. Okay? Very important. All right. Finding a set's complement. We've already talked about this a little bit, so this should be really easy. If that element is in both, that element is in both, that element is in both, and that element is in both, then a complement is the two that's not in both. The 5 and 6, that's still in the universal set, but not in A, and the 8 and 9. And I use very poor notation, so let me go ahead and put the braces back in, and that's our solution, and that makes us happy. And if you look, these numbers here, the 2, the 5, the 6, the 8, and the 9, they're all the ones that are outside of A over here, okay? So that's a really nice way of finding the complement, and that makes us super happy. I'm so happy it's like I'm the sun, I'm glowing, I'm so happy. All right? Uh, so this takes care of uh, Venn diagrams. We do want to go on to the second video for 2.3, and that is going to be operations with sets.